Thank you, thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. First of all, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see all of you this morning, and uh, let me first by recognizing our guests who are here with me, uh, Martin, who will be on the stage at some point, who is, who's done a lot of work in sustainability matters. Uh, Sylvia, so we all know what Safaricom has continued to do and has done a great job, and also recognize Judy, who is in charge of the the CEO of Global Compact in Kenya, the Kenyan chapter on the SDGs. So this is something very important. I think I've seen Jeff in the, in the crowd. The last time I spoke to Jeff, you are not supposed to be in Nairobi today, but it's good to see you here. Jeff is the CEO of Nairobi Securities Exchange. So very, very important for us in terms of the way we do our reporting. And everybody else who is here, who have, uh, and my, my colleagues in ESCO, and uh, our clients, and uh, our staff. I think a couple of things that I just want to highlight before we, we give you the report is why is, I'll start by saying why we believe as, as Standard Chartered, why this is important. I think it's important when, when all, when the global leaders met many, uh, there's a COP, whether it's a COPA in, in, in Paris, the climate, the agreement that was made, that's the political side. There's a lot of work that has been done by the private sector in terms of what are we going to do to ensure focusing especially on the climate change. What are we going to ensure that we are living in a sustainable world? We know the impact that the climate change, the issues that are affecting climate change have. And the question was always, what are specific actions that are going to be taken? And a lot of conferences have been held, a lot of meetings have been held, which is very, very important. And for us as Standard Chartered, one of the defining moments is when sustainability became one of the strategic pillars for the bank. So not just looking at the other strategic pillars, whether it's focusing on the network, uh, focusing on the affluent segment and, uh, and mass retail, but, uh, but elevating sustainability to be a key pillar of what we do as a bank. And that's very, very important. And for me, for us, it is also that the bigger challenge for, the, for companies such as ours then is it's good to talk about it, it's good to put it in your brochures, but what specifically and exactly are you going to do? I think to me that's the most defining moment because it's very easy to talk about these things. We are all trained to talk very well, aren't we? So you can always say that all the nice things. And to me why this report for us is important is now we are putting out there of the steps that Standard Chartered is taking that are measurable and that can be tracked. I'm sure Jeff will be very happy to hear that. That's the level of disclosure we always talk about when we talk about companies that are publicly quoted. Can you be able to open your books and you're able to share and people can be able to evaluate that you're making steps and you're making a big difference. And that's why to me, this is very, very exciting for us. So when I look at what this report is doing, is looking at the three sustainability aspirations that Regina highlighted, which is the sustainable finance, our operations, and our community engagement. And then taking each a measure in each and every one of those aspirations and saying, this is what we have done and this is what you are going to do. We have spent the last two years building a baseline because you have to know where you've got to start. And the baseline has made us very startling, would I call it startling discovery or revelations, things that we've understood that we probably took for granted. And I'm just going to highlight just a few. When I talk about sustainable finance, without, and, and the details are in there in terms of what are we doing on the areas of infrastructure. We know in Kenya, it, the infrastructure gap is huge. It's estimated in the billions. You've seen the money that is being talked about. And a lot of that development cannot only be left to the governments to do that alone. The private sector has to get involved. The best example is the expressway. That is a public-private uh, public partnership between the private sector and the government. And most of you who are using the, the expressway know how long now it takes to get to the airport compared to what you're doing before. So that is something very specific that's very clear working together between the private sector and the government. Then the area of climate change, which is the biggest challenge. When you talk about what companies have to do, what governments have to do, that's going to be a big, this is going to be a big topic and it's going to be continue being a major point of discussion for many, many years to come. Because to be able to create an impact, today it's estimated, depending on their various estimates, their various experts, but at least the last figures I saw in 2020, 2020 just before COVID, 2019, we was, we were emitting 51 billion tons of carbon emissions. That's 
and when you talk about the greenhouse gases, I'm talking about both carbon, methane, and all the other gases that are not nutritious. So when you talk about 51 billion tons, and so when you talk about accelerating zero, people don't, most people ask, what does exactly does that mean? It just means that if we are emitting 51 billion, we need to stay at 51 billion as a start. So you can imagine the, um, the task and how much it involves for us to be able to, just to stay at 51 billion, because that's how much we are emitting. And there's a big task involved. And for us as an institution, we ask ourselves, what can we do ourselves? But also, what can we do with our clients? Because it's, it's, a, it's always a trade-off. It's always a trade-off. When you're talking about sustainable practices, it costs money. So if it costs money, what are you going to give up? It's not uh, when, you're doing, when you're looking at your financials, what is the business case for transitioning? And that is one area, Standard Chartered, we are looking to see what can we do to help our clients transition. Because unless it makes business sense, unless it makes business, business sense, a lot of businesses will be reluctant to do anything about it. And in terms of the money we are mobilizing, we want to mobilize money as a bank, but we also want to bring our expertise to bear. And we bring other partners to bear as well. Because that's the only way we will especially help the SMEs. It's a, big, it's, a big, it's a big area. And SMEs will always look and look to how can they save money. That's one area that I wanted to, to highlight. When you look at our operations, as a bank, we made, we made great strides. One of the, the first ones that we did, which you call, what we call the low-hanging fruit, was making this building plastic-free. So all our water, everything here is plastic-free, and we are satisfied. And we've gone that to nine branches. And now we are working to fully make all our branches, our total branches in the country, 21 branches and other centers. Probably we've got 25, 26 uh, operating sites to completely plastic-free. The second one is recycling water in this building. We've reduced our water usage in this building by 50% by recycling all our water. All the water that we use in our bathrooms and our toilets is all recycled. And so we do the rainwater, the rain, the rainwater harvesting, then we recycle that water, and that is what is used for our, 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 our bathrooms. And that has gone away. And then electricity consumption. We've reduced our energy usage by 25% by taking very specific action on the kind of lights that we're using and the lead that we're using. And then, we, then recycling our waste. 99.9% .9 of the waste in this, uh, in this building and two other branches is fully recycled. And we want to extend this. Our target for this year is to get 100%. All our waste is recycled. And on top of that is reducing our paper usage. And we've reduced paper usage by more than 60%. So these are very, very specific actions we've taken as a bank in terms of our operations under the pillar of operations so that we are very clear these are the actions we want to take and then how do we extend this further and and for me when i look at when i look at some of the things that that those that we've done we've laid the base we've laid the baseline of how we need to do and then we need to increase it going forward and then finally when we talk about uh, community engagement the other sustainable pillar and other community engagement we operate on the brand of the future makers and this is where probably quite a number of you would know us through the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon. And uh, it's always an exciting event. For last year, for instance, we held the first hybrid event where over 5,600 people participated uh, virtually, which was, which, was a, which was a great outcome. But also, how do we make a marathon? And that's what we want to start going, going, doing this year. You'll start seeing it. How do we make this a fully sustainable marathon that we can be satisfied as green? And we are opening ourselves to be vetted and to be certified by external stakeholders, because that's, that's, that's important. And then when you look at the other areas of future makers, when we look at what you are doing around employability, entrepreneurship, and, uh, and education, we've partnered with five, six universities. And last year, and earlier this year, we signed an agreement. We want to put just, above, just below a million dollars, which is about 145 million Kenyan shillings, to have support our youth have access to not only education, but to be employable. Because that's a challenge, that yes, they are going to the, they are going to the universities, they are, graduating, they are graduating, and they are coming out, but they are, not, they are not employable. Maybe because something as basic as writing a CV properly, do they are not able to tell their skills to the potential employer. And we want to see the impact that we want to, to create, to create a, around this. So for us, we take this as a company, because we believe it's important. We believe that as a, as a leading financial company in Kenya and globally, we have to take a stand and ensure that all the commitments that are being made, that, the, that our leaders are making, we can actually bring them to life. 
And that's why for us, we are very excited about the sustainability impact report. It is the first one, which lays the baseline for what we want to do continue going forward. So that over time, over time, because things take time. Transitioning, when you talk about the, like the pillar of, of sustainability finance and climate change, transitioning is not going to happen in a hurry. It's not gonna happen in a hurry. It's going to take time. It's going to take a, a long time to win ourselves off fossil fuels. I don't think anybody is ready yet to, to say, if I'm dumping fossil fuels, I'm going to clean energy overnight. It's going to take time. But it's important for mankind. It's important for companies. It's important for individuals to start making the first step. And what we've done today, and what the, if you look at our journey over the last two years, we have made the first step that, uh, to start getting, to make our contribution so that we can be seen as a responsible company and help others leading the way. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I want to thank the team for putting this together. It's, not, it's been a lot of hard work to open up ourselves to scrutiny and also to discover that how much more that we need to do and how much more time is left. And my appeal to each and every one of you, this is a journey. This is a journey. And we need, we welcome you to join us in this journey as we continue making this planet, the only planet that we've got, better for ourselves, but most important for the future generations. The impact of climate change is real. It's real. You've seen. Most of you who are Kenyans know that the long rains have failed. So those of you who do shopping, you can see what's happening to your food basket. Uh, that, that is, you don't need, I don't know what other statistics you need. The last time there was no rain in the month of May. I don't know, most of us in, who, are, who have been in the country long enough, I don't know, I don't know whether you remember any time there's never been any rain in May and April. So it, uh, it's real. And then at the same time, no rain here, look at what's happening in South Africa. So if you don't believe yet in the climate change is real, and we need to start doing something, because the future generations, if we are being impacted now, they'll be impacted even a lot more at that time. So thank you very much, and please join me in this journey as we, as we make a, a contribution in this time, you know, this lifetime.